The situation in Ontario is discouraging. It was truly disheartening to see Doug Ford's clumsy attempt to back down from his anti-francophone cuts in Ontario. It's not that he suddenly received enlightenment along the road to Damascus. It was about political pressure, and clearly he still doesn't get it. It took real courage for rookie MPP Amanda Simard to leave the Conservatives over the issue. I don't feel that's enough, and I know that the uh, franco ontarians don't feel that it's enough. Now, the leaders of all major federal parties met this week to discuss what has become an important Canadian issue. And they rightly vow to maintain pressure on the Ontario leader to carry through with the plan to create a Francophone university. The danger is, is that the rise of populist movements endangers minority rights everywhere. Ford just decided to light the fuse and it ignited another ugly debate. Bilingualism and the protection of minorities cannot be viewed as a bottom line item. You just need to scratch the surface for those who use that argument because you often find intolerance, anti-French, anti-English, small-minded people who see gains for the minorities as losses for the majority. It has happened in Quebec, it is happening in Ontario and New Brunswick. These things are not negotiable. Franco-Ontarians are not asking for additional rights or services. We're asking that the existing protections and entities remain in place. Living as English-speaking Quebecers, we know this all too well. The fight of Franco-Ontarians is our fight too. Well, our newly minted Premier this week had these words for our community. We are proud to protect your historical rights and we will keep on doing just that. Now, in the same breath, he announced that his government will plow ahead with abolishing elected school boards and replace them with so-called non-elected service centers. If that is protecting our historical rights, then no thanks, Mr. Legault. See you in court. Well, it was big enough to make the front page of the Journal de Montréal and, of course, Quebec or sibling TVA weighed in with its own sense of alarm. Hydro-Quebec, you see, is going to start sending unilingual English bills to its English customers, 400,000 of them. Hydro says basically it will make the bills easier to decipher for its clients and it is allowed under Bill 101. Now, of course, the usual suspects such as the Mouvement Québec Français weighed in, calling this a clear setback for French in Quebec. It wants the Premier to intervene to deal with this most troubling of developments, since it says Hydro-Quebec is a symbol of francophone success. Well, here's the thing, Hydro-Quebec belongs to all of us. Our electricity bills and rates are not a function of language, so bravo to Hydro for customer service. Well, sad to see this week the removal of the Archambault sign on St. Catherine Street. You don't miss these things until they are gone. It seems to me that we are often all too eager to erase the past. The sign, like so many before, which has been taken down, represents a loss for Montreal. A small one, but yeah, they do add up. Just like Montreal bagels being cooked in wood-fired ovens, the plant administration has set its sights on them. Now, sometimes I worry that in a rush to fix everything, from cars to signs to bagels to roads over the mountain, we will lose some authenticity and lose some things that make Montreal, Montreal. I'm Barry Wilson. You can follow us on Facebook and Twitter, and please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And don't forget to check out our weekly poll on Facebook. We want to know what you think.